Welcome back to our rich YouTube channel. Today's class we will learn how to make this beautiful draped yoke blouse with bishop sleeve. It's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly. This is something you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so for this tutorial, I have my body strapped already. This is the front and this is the back bodies. Okay. So for the front, I want it to be a bustier, but you can also use the regular waist that doesn't have to be a bustier that like I have it here. So this is my armhole line, this is the bust point, the under bust, and this is the waist line. Okay, you can see that the front is 2 inches longer than the back because of the bust that, that I'm taking here. So here... On the bust this this center line you are seeing is my bust pan which is the nipple to nipple and then on my other bust i took it out of one one inch and i did the same thing for the waist that and then put it down and then i use my cover to connect it to the bust point so the next thing now is to create the style lines okay so now the first thing you need to know is the depth of your neckline for the front that's where you want your yoke to to stop so for me i think i'm just going to maintain what i have as my hammer line which is eight inches and then using my curve ruler i'm going to connect that in like a sit out from all the way to my all the way to the boss pan but to make this easier for me i'm just going to try to open one of the dots so that i can close my so that i can close my bust that easily so i'm opening this that now and once it is opened i'm going to close this bust that so i've closed this that now and i'm going to hold this with my masking tape so like i said before we cut out our yoke, because the yoke is actually very very important here, I'm going to I'm going to I have noted this eight inches to be the depth of my neckline. So now I'm going to be connecting it like this. So from my hand pull, depending on the amount of yoke that you want for your depending on the amount of depth you want your yoke to take you can go by like one or two inches from your hand hole but for me i'm just going to go two inches like this from my hand hole so i'm going to measure out the allowance because this pattern already has the same allowance of one and a half inches so i'm measuring the allowance on that on that point and then i'm going to connect from my neck depth remember this hand hole is also doubling as my neck depth all the way to this point to the two inches mark here with my curve ruler so you can see how the curve ruler is just helping me to just give it that coffee effect there okay so you can see what i have you can decide to go with any design you want and then i'm going to connect that to my same allowance so now I'm going to tighten this upper bust by just extending my my that leg up to this point and then I'm going to take like half an inch or just to quarter of an inch. This is just to avoid gaping on that part. So just quarter of an inch on both sides and then I'm going to connect that to, to my to my bust point. Okay. So this is just to tighten the upper bust. Actually necessary. So that's what I have, and I'm going to cut this out. So the half an inch shortage that that tightening is going to give me is not going to affect my body. So I'm not going to be having this back. But if you are taking more than that, and you feel it's going to affect your body should just add this back on the side so here i'm cutting out my yoke and then i'm going to set this aside because like i said the yoke is actually very important so, so now this is my yoke i'm cut out the ankle as well 
so after cutting this are my two lower patterns for the front and this is the yoke for the front as well so now the only thing i'm going to do for the back now i want the yoke also to be on the back so where i stopped my measurement that's two inches that's where my yoke stopped two inches below my ham hole line so i'm just going to take that measurement here as well and then for the yoke i'm not going to curve it i'm just going to make it in form of a straight line like this okay so now this is going to be the yoke for the back you can do whatever style that you want as well and then i'm going to cut out the yoke okay so here for the back i'm just going to close off the back that and hold it with a pen with a masking tape so that i'm just going to have one piece Okay. Uh, what are the tightening that I'm doing for my back? For my back zipper, and now we are going to work on the yoke because the main part of this tutorial is basically on the yoke. Okay, so now this is the yoke for the front. The next thing is to introduce our style line so that we can do the slash and spread. So now the first thing I'm going to do now is to remove my seam allowance. Remember I said we have seam allowance on this pattern, seam allowance of one and a half inches. So here, here is my seam allowance. So I'm just going to connect it like this. So my slash line is not going to enter into my seam allowance. So basically, you can measure the different inches that you have between them, but I'm just going to draw out some slash lines. I'm just using my free hand to do this. Anyhow, you want the volume you are introducing to go, you just draw out your slash lines like that, like you are seeing me doing. So, okay, so I have it, it may not be up to this actually if you don't want to introduce too much volume, but if you want it to you want it to be voluminous, you just need to open it up by um, the amount of volume that you want. So this is the slash line for the front. And then for the back as well, the first thing you need to do is to note the type of neckline you want. I'm just going with the regular neckline. Then after that, I'm going to remove my seam allowance as well, just like I did for the front. And then I'm going to just draw out my slash line. So whatever slash lines that I'm drawing also, I'm not going to let it get into my zipper allowance for the back so i'm just going to draw a few for the back just for the purpose of explanation i'm not going to make it so much like i have in front so i'm just drawing out my slash lines like we have seen and this is what we have okay so now after doing out our slash lines like this the next thing is for us to cut it so i'm going to cut from this lower part all to the end part so i'm cutting out my neckline for the front so you're going to cut it from here now up to this upper part but you're not going to cut completely okay so you can see that i'm stopping at the tip so i'm cutting the slash lines all the way to the tip so what you are just doing now is cutting the lines that we created so it is not this along this line that our volume is going to be introduced by the time we spread it and we make it on fabric you will see how the how the drips that we're going to be having the drip is going, just going to follow these lines that we have created so you're just going to cut open all your slash line but be careful not to cut to the tip so that you won't have your fabric separated okay and like I said, I don't want these lash lines to enter into my seam allowance. So you can see that I have left that part out. So now, after cutting it open, the next thing is to spread. So I'll bring in a fresh paper to spread this one. Okay, so now I have my fresh paper like this. So you just need to note your center front, which is here. Remember, this is just a half scale body. So for us to be able to cut a full scale body, this has to be on fold. So you can see me placing it on fold at this center of this new pattern that I have. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to hold them together with the tape before I start to spread. It's very, very important. 
or else you are slashing on a full scale you can see that i'm splashing mine on a half scale pattern so now i'm securing that so after securing it now you start to spread it how much volume with how much volume that you want i don't want too much volume you can see that i have a lot of slash lines so i think i'm just going to be spreading it with just i think one one inch or one and a half inches interval so now this is the first line you place your tape now and then you measure the intervals that you want between them so now i've placed my tape and i have one inch here so on that part now where my one inch stops you're going to place the next one and then use your tape to hold it down like this so you move from that you go to the next one now you measure the next one inch use your tape to hold this down as well so if you can eyeball it you don't have to use a tape so i'm just going to eyeball it now and then i'll keep spreading it with the one inch that i want it doesn't have to be one inch like i said you just work with whatever volume that you want so now you can see me spreading it I'm just i'll just keep spreading all of them like that okay so i have spread everything out now it may look a bit technical but it's actually very simple you just need to understand the concept behind it by the time we gather it you can see that our ham hole is curved now but by the time we gather all these our spread back to the original size everything is going to come down and go back to its original shape so this is what i have now you can have the necessary seam allowance that you want to have i'm adding half an inch on the shoulder area I'm not adding any allowance to the neckline. If you want to add allowance to your neckline, you can add. So I'm adding half an inch around all of this as well to join it back to my to my lower bodies. So you just had your necessary allowance, and now we are going to cut this out. So the same way I have spread, I have slashed the lines for the front. Is the same way I'm going to slash for the back as well, and then I'm going to spread it it's that simple so you can see that i'm just cutting along the lines that i made i'm cutting out my neckline i'm cutting the shoulder and then i'm cutting my arm hole as well i do not have any allowance on the arm hole so if you want to have allowance on your arm hole you can go ahead and do that as well so I'm just cutting what I have. So like I said, this is my allowance. This is my pattern already has seam allowance. If yours does not have a seam allowance, you may need to add that. So this is my new shape for the front. So now I'm going to bring in the back as well. Slash my cut out my neckline. Slash open my slash lines and then spread it just like i did for this okay so this is the back as well and then just like i did for the front i have opened the slash lines and i spread it as well so here i'm just going to add my seam allowance on the neckline and then i'm going to cut this half as well so you can see how simple it is and i also had half an inch on the lower on the lower part so you can measure this but i'm just eyeballing my half an inch so please measure when you're doing yours so that you can be sure so this is what i have i'm going to connect it like this and then with my scissors i'll cut this out okay so this is what our final pattern is looking like this is the front and these are the two lower parts for the front and this is the back pattern Okay, this is the back and then we close the dots for the back so we have just one single piece so i'll go ahead now and cut this on my fabric then i'm going to show us how we're going to sew them together cut this on my fabric this is the center front this is the side front and then i had it half an inch to join this back to the yoke as well i had it an allowance on the dart line as well but i did not have any allowance on the side seam because i already have that on my pattern so now i have it like this this is the yoke like make sure to put this part on fold before cutting out the yoke so that i can have the two together so for the back 
this is my back piece as well i have my allowance at the upper part and then this is the yoke as well remember i already had the necessary allowance on the yoke so i didn't need to add that when transferring to my fabric again so here i'm just going to notch my my zipper allowance there so if you are going to be adding a lining to this you need to cut your lining the same way you have cut your lower pieces and then i'm going to show us how we're going to turn the lining but i'm not going to be fixing lining to this so here what i'm going to do now is just to go ahead and sew my darts together remember we are not sewing anything on the back because i already closed our darts so now for the yoke i'm going to carefully remove my pins and then we're going to be gathering this back to its original size so now before you slash and spread after cutting out your yoke you can just decide to use your tracing wheel to trace it out and and keep it somewhere because you are going to need this for i did not cut i did not trace mine out so what i'm just going to do now is to carefully close all these slash lines back so that I can have my original pieces. So I'm going to be comparing my gathers to the original piece, or you can just measure the hem, your original hem line, so that you know the actual size that you started with, because that's what's going to assist you in gathering. Remember, I said this funny shape that you have on your handhold. Once you gather it back, you're going to have your regular handhold back, so you can see what we have. So now, once we gather this back to our original size. So to do that, I'm just carefully removing this so that I can put them back in place. I'm going to close up all these that that I opened, all this slash and spread that I did. So that so to save yourself all of this, what you can do is after cutting out your patterns, before you slash it open, just cut another one. So you can see me closing them back. So you just cut another one and keep on this side so that that's going to be useful for you. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So now I'm closing up my pattern back. Okay, so you can see that I've removed it now. I'm just going to close it up back by bringing them together again. We're no longer slashing. So I'm just going to use my paper tape to hold them together. Or you can just put it on another pattern. And cut it up so you can see that i've glued it back to its original size with my tape so this is the front and this is the back now so it's back to its original shape so now i'm going to gather this back so uh, when you open it up you can see that it's together because we cut it on food so now i'm going to gather this back to its original size so i can easily gather this because i'm working with gathers but if you're working with splits you may need to notch the distance between each of your spreads so that you can pleat it to the exact measurement bag but because this is gather i'm just going to gather everything all at once so i'll go over to the same machine run the gather stitch here and also on the back and then i'm going to join my that line for the front so i'll do that now and bring it back to show us what we have okay so i've gone ahead to sew it now you can see so i'm just going to notch it on the under bust area so that I can relax so, so now this is a tutorial you can see that I'm not padding it or anything you can go ahead and cut your soft wording and do it sweet so for your lining also you cut it exact same way like this and then you sew it together so now this is the lower bodies I've gone ahead to run my gather stitches on the lower part so this is one half of the back so when you're running your gather stitch remember to not include your zipper allowance and also your seam allowance so this is the first back this is another back panel and this is the front so now I'm going to just pull my thread a bit and gather it back to its original measurement that we started with so I'm just holding it now and then I'm pulling it so I've gone ahead to gather it you can see now you can bring in your original pattern to check so now I'm placing it on it and you can see that the hem is exactly the same so that is why you need your original pattern so these are the two back panels and this is the front so once you gather it you will notice that your 
can see that our ham hole now is back to normal so this is the front and you can see the drips is just going to follow the slash lines that you drew you can see that our slash line was slanted and our drip just comes like that as well so now this is the upper part which is the yoke and this is the lower part so now the next thing you're going to do now is to take it to the sewing machine now and join the upper part and the lower part together for the front and back so like i said if you are going to be fixing the lining to this you are just going to after joining your yoke you just place your lining on it like this and sew it so that i can use it to cover up all the rough edges okay so i've gone ahead to sew it you can see i just sew it together and this is what the front looks like now and these are the two back pieces so like i said if you are fixing lining to this all you just need to do is to place your lining here so it's the exact same way and then you fold it over so once you flip it it's going to cover all these rough edges for you so now the next thing is just to place them right side facing right side sew it together on the shoulder and then i'm going to go ahead and sew it on the side seam as well before we work on our sleeve okay so it's on now this is what we have the shoulder is joined so you just need to hem it on the neckline and then now we are going to work on the sleeve so the sleeve is a very simple sleeve i'm just going to use the technique we use in making our giggle sleeve to make it it doesn't have to be this way but i want mine to be as neat as possible so i just want it like this so now i have my basic sleeve already this is a long sleeve the length of this sleeve is around 20 Two inches of that okay so my long sleeve is 22 inches i added one inch seam i mean allowance to it that's why i have 23 inches so now for the puffness that we have there i have a fabric of 20 inches by 14 inches on fold so which means 28 inches when you open it up so this is okay so this is 14 inches on fold by the time you open it up we are going to have 28 inches i hope you can see that and the length that i'm working with here is 20 inches so i have a fabric of 14 inches on fold by 20 inches that's 28 inches by 20 inches and that is what i'm going to be using to form the puffiness so to create this puffiness now this upper part that i have I'm going to bring in my basic sleeve remember there's no there's no gather on the upper part so the upper part is just lying flat the only puffiness is on the lower side so i'm going to bring in my basic sleeve now and then i'm going to place it on this part so once i place it like this you can clearly see my armhole line so i'm going to go ahead and use that to cut out the armhole for this as well okay so once you place it you see that i have exactly the same thing so where this basic leaf stops which is here i'm going to note it with my chalk then after noting it i'm going to remove my pattern so from where my basic sleeve stops there i'm just going to place my ruler in a diagonal form so that i can have like an hair line so you can also use your slash and spread method to get this but i'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible so once you have your hair line there you're going to cut off the excess that you have so making this sleeve is simple so this is what we have and we're going to be pleating that on our basic sleeve so to place it on my basic sleeve i'm going to bring in my basic sleeve again and open it up so once i open it i'm going to measure my elbow measurements so from the head of the sleeve here the elbow i'm working with is 11 inches so i mark 11 inches here and make it into a straight line so after making my 11 inches into a straight line the hem of this of this puff part i'm going to go ahead and pleat it to fit into this elbow measurement so now you gather all of this you gather all of this i'm gathering it so you gather all of this now to fit into this then after gathering it we'll flip it over so i'm just going to gather it first and then bring it back to show us what it looks like okay so this is gathered now you can see this is the basic sleeve and this is the upper part so you can see the way i gathered it right side facing right side i just gathered it so now i'm going to flip it over and then match it with my 
remember we used it to cut it so it's just going to be the same thing so after matching this now i'm going to hold that part also with a stitch so i'm going to have to stitch that part you can see it's together now this is the wrong side you can see that it is not looking as neat as possible the next thing is to flip them together like this and then i'm going to sew the underarm down okay so i'm just flipping it like this taking everything together and i'm going to sew it on the underarm and i'll hem it on the lower part then fix it to my bodies so i'll do all of this now and bring it back to show as well okay so the sleeve is fixed as well you can see the pencil sleeve that we have underneath this puff so now i'm going to take this to the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like okay so this is what the full bodies looks like you can see the sleeve that we created and these are our drapes so the dress just goes along the style lines that we created as you can see this is the ham hole part and this is the lower part of the main bodies i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye